Hey, welcome back to the Sarcast. This is episode eight. I'm here with Wheezy Jacket and Popcorn the Beaver. My name is Birds with Goats, and we are going to talk about some of the happenings in the last few months of Super Animal Rail. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing fantastic. It's going well. It's going well. It's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little bit. Been very busy. You know, I'm 22 days away from getting married. Um, I have had multiple hurricanes. I moved into an apartment by myself. So just been really crazy. Anything you guys want to share that's been going on in your lives? Uh, just a lot of therapy. I've been getting a lot better mentally. Uh, I got oh, a job cool. recently, so it's been fun. We see got uh, employed. Yeah, so it seems like everyone's been super busy, but we're glad to be back here with you guys once again. So we have a few topics that we wrote down that we just want to talk about, some happenings. And the first things first is we have had two events happen since the last episode that was recorded. We had the end of summer event as well as the Howl, Howl-o-ween? Howl-o-ween. Halloween event that just ended oh, a few days yeah. away, uh, a few days ago as well. So let's start with that end of summer about end of summer event. Very well named because holy moly, I don't even think yeah. it was officially summer yeah. when that dropped, was it? No, it was no. fall. <laughs> it dropped on September 24th and ended on October 15th. That's it would have been absolutely fall for the entire time. So I actually uh, didn't even get all of the quests done for this. This was during my main time of just being absolutely gonzo. So any uh, anything that stands out from uh, that yeah. event that you guys really like? Uh, in truth, I think that like summer cosmetics and by extension i guess spring have always been very sort of generalist they're always nice like the uh what's that one food called the tonghulu the thing with like a potato chip spiral yeah you get them from like street yeah the tornado potatoes that one is a pretty popular melee i've seen uh i do know that the animals were quite nice there was the super durian hedgehog there's the tomato frog and then there's the uh Hoku Yaki Octopus, I believe, is the correct yep. say what you're saying? It? Yes. And then we finally got that fruit bowl, gravestone, and the pineapple melee. Uh, new dart gun. Actually a really cool looking dart gun. Makes little juice noises. It's always fun to have weapons that make uh, audio noises whenever you shoot a reload. So those pretty well received. But besides that, it was a pretty general event but yeah. it was something worth noting i guess this is another event that happened after uh forkers changed to not double health from event consumables which i did notice some people on stream when they had forker they eat it and they're like what the hell and then they're just like <laughs> They don't get 50 health, they only get 25, and they're like, what is this? This game's rigged, and then they didn't know the change happened, which was pretty funny. I think it was 20 when they changed it. It used to be 25, though. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it would take, like, five bananas to heal instead of four. Yeah, I'm talking about the uh, event consumables, not bananas. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because that that was way too overpowered, the fact that you could just insta-heal 50. Ooh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the summer event. Yeah, Easy. would then, you like to talk about the Halloween one? Yeah, go for or, it. Well, I guess Broads, you go. <laughs> go for it, Weezer. Did, did you play the Halloween event or not? Not really. I don't think I mean, Broads I was, was really here much for so, it. So, oh, okay. on the final day of the ha- Halloween event, I went live at 10 a.m. EST, my first stream in 21 days. Oh, and I played right. Super Animal Royale, and in one hour and 30 minutes, I completed every quest from start to finish from week one to the week three. In case oh, you're that's, a, that's quite a speed. <laughs> in case you're wondering how long it takes, and of course that includes me messing around, taking a break, in between time of lobbies, you know, doing stupid stuff. So it only takes around an hour to complete three weeks worth of challenges, by the way, total, in game time. I feel like that's a statement just in and of itself to show that the challenges are a bit too easy. Yeah, that's kind of why I suggested to make them harder. Yep, so I uh, got to experience the full (laughs) event all at once in one hour. In one hour. completed the entire thing, so that was fun. So yes, I did get to uh, experience this one, but we should go take it away. Take a uh, go 
through some of your favorite uh, cosmetics or maybe uh, you felt, honestly the casa obake umbrella was it looks really goofy it's the umbrella with the one eye and yeah. you get it by landing at the crocodile club that one was really fun it's from japanese folklore right yep where it's i forget the exact lore behind it but i think it's just that the umbrella eats you i don't remember <laughs> though yeah or the obake eats you but yeah uh we also got the green witch hat which is the additional cosmetic to the witch outfit or the green another witch outfit. good another just good hat yep uh we also got like four new breeds which were pretty interesting my, which one of them being my favorite the cthulhu skin <laughs> I love the Cthulhu skin. Yeah, I heard a little buzz so about good. that. Apparently it is very, very well made. So what do we think about that skin versus some of the other ones that we've been receiving lately? It's definitely like up there. And I do think that it's both a good and concerning thing that that skin just looks amazing. Like it's got custom textures. It is very different from every other skin in the game. Uh, maybe besides the uh, dragons and the peacocks. Because those actually have um, much more additives to the skin. Like the peacocks have the giant feathers and the dragons. Uh, like they, they just have better design overall for the skin and yeah. their features. But you have the Cthulhu uh, octopus squid. I forget which brand it is. But um, I, it is a statement to show that they are now sort of... It's getting harder to make baseline skins like they can't just release something like oh yeah look it's a cat but it's yellow it wouldn't go over well it has to be like yes it's a cat it's yellow it has a scar on this eye its paw has tuft fur on the right one like it now has to have much more features than normal and something that makes it stand out and i feel like that's good because you'd have a uh, better expression with what you're trying to create and bad in the sense of minimalism and limitations usually allow you to express creativity more by showing I have this blank canvas and I'm going to put things on this blank canvas versus I have a canvas, but there's already stuff on it and I'm putting more stuff on it. <laughs> Honestly, that, that's just me though. That's just me. I'll say besides that, the, the Kappa turtle was really really well designed as well it is very cute i'll say <laughs> yeah it's like you're combining a turtle and a duck together uh, yeah see yap corn is back let's go and we also have the okay. alibri owl which is just orange an orange and red uh owl combined well you know how alibri is it's just a mixture of colors together and then the candy corn bat which is a bat that just has candy corn colors which it's pretty simple yeah, that uh, one I was very happy to yeah. see because it's a baseline character. If I could also add something quickly, they updated the Day of the Dead animal code where you get sort of a reflection of the original um, Mirachi band outfit. No, I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I saw Mirachi that. Dress. Yeah, I like how they updated the Day of the Dead code. Yeah, chat, it is, it chat is a good thing. In. It was pretty solid. I, I yeah. love the outfit. Because the first time it came out was in 2019, I believe. Good so lord. It's been, it's been six years. Six years? No. Yep. Six. Uh, it's either five or six. No, it's five. It's five. Oh, five. Okay. God, oh, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that old, Weezy. Please, no. I uh, mean, I'm al I'm almost in my sixth year of SARS. So. Oh. No. All right. All right. So yeah, events, move us forward. Yeah, events were honestly pretty solid uh good thing too we definitely needed them now there was a little patch as well and we noted down some of our changes that we felt were worth mentioning a little or a lot but let's go ahead and start with the this drop came a supporter pack what was the specific name of that supporter pack i lost it oh wait the, uh, the super animal world supporter oh, pack specifically super animal world came out with an emote uh, three new breeds, a mini pet, and a bunch of cosmetics as well. And um, I, when it came out, I bought like three or four of them for other people. Just kind of went down my friends list and bought it for people. 
And then when I streamed the other day, like I was about the Halloween event, I said, wait, what's that little gun emote you have? How do you get that? And they're like, That's oh, it, the it was from the animal pack. You you probably have it, right? Uh, I went through my entire emote wheel. I was like, wait a second. Did I buy the supporter pack for other people and not for myself? Oh, and my I went, God. I went, and that was, <laughs> in fact, the case. I had bought it for other people, and I did not buy it for myself, so I had to get it. But Okay, I feel you on that one. Yeah. I gave away 10 of, like, Season 9, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't actually oh, have it myself. <laughs> So oh, interesting little in. pack. Um, yeah. Uh, something to note, this is a permanent DLC. It's not one that rotates like the seasonal ones. This one's here to stay. Yeah, it's not like Founders as well. So, Or Super Edition. Really? Yeah, how, actually, do we, Super Edition how do we know that that's staying? Uh, I believe it was Logan in the feed, or maybe it was Lies. I forget which one exactly. One of them said somewhere in feedback chat that it was not going away might have been general chat actually i i don't fully remember but i do know that it was confirmed that this dlc what is to stay yeah all right you also well, get 750 tickets which you can use that to buy a previous battle pass of your choice yeah definitely one true. of the more valuable things they've ever dropped because of three reads 12 cosmetics uh, one of those being an emote and 750 saw tickets for 10 bucks. Probably one of the most cost efficient things you've ever been able to buy in SAR, I would say. Uh, the mini a, dragon is huge. Yeah, you I get, love that. Oh, yeah. You get a lot of bang for your buck there. So, pretty uh, good little drop. Anything else you want to say about that before we head to the specific patch things? Probably some of the best animal skins in the game, I'd say. Animal skins very well in the game. What do we have? We have the. Super it Dawn was... Songbird, the Super Dusk Raccoon, and the Midnight Deer. They pretty, look pretty so solid. good. It's pretty very good. stylish. I really like the colors. Yeah, they're they're pretty well done. I, yeah. I like I hear people gushing about them on stream when it was first like live. And lobbies were filled with these guys. <laughs> I remember the day of release, you would only see these three animals for a good 80% of lobbies you were in. It was insane. It's just like season zero. <laughs> yeah, it was like season zero. That's all you'd see. You'd only see the Twilight uh, Panic Fox. Oh my god. It's nuts. But yeah, it, it good drop. It, it's a good DLC, I will say. A little costly, but it is a good DLC. All right, super yep. solid. Now, going into the specific notes, some of the things that we wrote down was, oh, well, I added two together on accident. I put yeah. SVR no juicer, but <laughs> let's start we, with just the probably, SVR changes. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'm the resident nerd on SVR, so I'll go over them real quick. Uh, basically, what happened is Scout 2 now has a Tier 2 instead of Tier 3, which, good hit to Scout. I do think it needed it. Uh, Sniper 2 now comes with a Bandolier, which, especially with something that we we're going to mention a bit later, is very much more noteworthy. But it also had its uh, Stage 2 armor change from Tier 3 to Tier 2. And then Heavy 1 now has Tier 2 at base and is now the only class with a Tier 2, or sorry, a Tier 3 at Stage 2. So... Heavy basically got a massive glow up with SVR. It is, especially considering Heavy has a Magnum and every class now can only go up to tier two, and Heavy having a tier two at base really gives him the name Heavy as a class because it is just the Heavy character. They have a lot more armor, a lot more sustain. It's pretty nuts for Heavy. Yeah, it's only good if you uh, know how to be very precise. That's the thing. Yeah, it, there, it definitely is skill curve. You have a good, but I will say, it is just a very nice change. Definitely good. I played a lot of SVR when this dropped, and from what I saw, a lot of people were a bit confused, but all the games I were in, I never really felt angry going oh why does this have a tier two all oh, this sucks i'm like 
No, this makes sense. I'm happy that yeah, it makes it now makes so sense far where they are. Scout also... definitely is good that it has tier two instead of tier three. It did not need the tier three. <laughs> yeah, it felt a little oppressive as a scout because you, you you were super yeah. aggressive with it. it already one of the to. strongest classes in the in the mode. It's gotten like so, scouts already gotten like so many nerfs already. Oh my god! Like, out of yeah. all the classes. Like, Medic has only gotten, like, maybe one nerf, and it was just a Thomas gun going to the blue SMG. Uh, yeah, and then they gave it the, um, the dart fly, so it was actually more like a, uh, more like a rework, but a delayed rework, so. Yeah. When you, when you look at, like, things like Scout compared to Heavy, it just one constantly got nerfed, and one constantly got buffed, so. It really yeah. goes to show. Um, but, I guess... I haven't seen any changes on Assault and Sniper yet. Or, I think Assault, it was just a pistol change, but that's it. Yeah, Assault was just going to a blue pistol, and that was about it. Uh, yeah, and Medic, Sniper. I, I think Sniper every class changes. has got a good chunk of changes. I think Sniper going from Skunk Bombs to Cat Mines was a bit of a... bit of a downgrade if you ask me i think the skunks definitely do a lot more in a mode like that where zone control is very important but i yeah, but you're gotten... a sniper though you don't really yeah. want to be aggressive you're very defensive i'll say that is fair but i so feel like are a good defensive uh, I, I feel like it wasn't enough compensation to put it that way yeah, okay. they kind of like took a very strong element away from sniper and then gave it something like Oh yeah, I'm gonna take five dollars away from you and give you two bucks. Like it's it, it just hurt a bit. But now that it has the bandolier and the bandolier got a change, which haha, we mentioned, uh, it is definitely a lot stronger now. Which I guess let's uh we should probably get into the two ability changes. Um, the two ability changes. Or, well, I guess one change and one uh, removal. Yeah, so first things first, the juicer is dead. Does everyone rejoice or... Bring out the coffin dance. Bum, yep. ba, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, it seems uh, like everyone is pretty okay with it being gone. It was definitely just a meme item. Um, a lot of greenies were like, wait, it, why it is was, it good? It was very niche. Like, it only helped in some situations, but that's it. Yeah, it, it was just... It underperformed a bit too much to the point where it was just not necessary. I think yeah. that they could have done something, but it was probably a good call just removing it and then saying, we're going to work on trying to do something with it in the future. So that, that was yeah. probably the best call. So an interesting one for me, at least, is I already thought that this um, ability was super good. And so when I heard that it actually got better not worse and of course i'm talking about the bandolier changes i thought that yes. was super interesting what do we have to say about that i was actually a bit surprised so uh yeah. I, I guess to put some perspective there was an ongoing joke in the feedback section on the sar discord that someone would mention the specific change that i got which i i guess we should probably just mention it now um what happened was the bandolier got a 10% reload speed buff, which everything that you have would now reload 10% faster, which is actually quite beneficial, but not as scary as a lot of people once originally thought. And the reason for that is that in the feedback section, there would always be someone that thinks that they're a genius for coming up with the game-changing bandolier change, and then they'd post it, they'd get mass downvoted, they're like, why did everyone downvote me? And the entirety of feedback chat would be like one word, the hunting rifle. <laughs> yeah. So the reasoning for that, the hunting rifle is very unique in that it has the fastest reload speed in the game at 0.7 seconds. But what you can do is sort of break that reload to remove the input delay and just fire immediately. And you do that by hitting the reload key right as you fire, and then you effectively just kind of spam it like you would a magnum at that point. But the point is, 
when you give something like that a reload speed buff, it becomes very concerning. And luckily, it wasn't that concerning. So it was more of just a passive worry that a lot of people had, and it turned out, oh, it wasn't actually that bad. So definitely a good change. I'd say the bandolier yeah. did sort of put itself in the spotlight. Uh, I wouldn't say on my end that I saw it as a great power up. I definitely would say that it's, it's very better niche. than yeah, it's niche, but it's better than most people give it credit for. I will say that. Yeah, but with I the expect change, it to be like in the middle. Of the yeah, with, with the change, it's actually quite nice now, to the point where everyone sort of says, "Yeah, I'll pick it up if I need to," because. I, I think that's a difference with a lot of abilities. You look at one and you're just going, nah, it's too situational. Where you look at others and you're like, yeah, I'm fully willing to pick that up whenever. The bandolier now kind of falls in that category of I'm willing to pick this up whenever. I could I could say it would it would definitely benefit if you're using a BCG, because apparently bandolier also affects uh the charge rate of the weapon. So if you're using a bow or BCG, you charge a little faster. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yep. I yeah, that was that. proven. I don't know if it's intentional, but it hasn't it hasn't been directly addressed nor stated it would get changed. So I think that Like I I noticed weird. it myself when I was using DCG or bow with Bandolier. Yeah. It's it's it can be pretty strong. So yeah, Bandolier with any charge weapon being does it affect super right? I don't oh actually. yeah, I don't know. Uh, because there's I, no... I need to test that actually. Yeah, because there's no charging mechanic. Well, you charge up the weapon to like. It's like a rev, fire, right? Yeah. It's like it's like a rev. It's like mini gun. Yeah. Whereas I I, I guess to oh. put it as a statement, we do know that bow and BCG both get affected by the bandolier, so. The meme of bandoliers useless with bow isn't actually true because even if you can't reload it, you can charge it faster. Yeah. So I, you know, maybe it was intentional then because bow actually couldn't get anything out of BCG. So, or sorry, bow couldn't get anything out of bandolier, and now yeah, but that's just ammo capacity. But that's it. Yeah, which I mean is is definitely useful for specialty ammo, but it is a noteworthy thing. And I have actually seen it get used not only against me, but I've used it myself. So it is, it's a good quality of life and also a good indirect buff to those weapons, even if they didn't need it. But good change, nonetheless. Bandolier, solid, eh, A, A minus maybe. Yeah, I'd say. for sure. Alrighty, let's move right along. Next, one of the, actually, I feel like this will probably be two shorter mentions, but uh, two different throwables did get changed, starting with the cat mine. Uh, your teammates can no longer just troll you and instantly pop them. Now, as someone who has made fun of cat mines constantly and then get memed on by them and have never been able to live it down, yay. Yeah. I... <laughs> I, I do like the change. I think some people are against it. And I was actually a bit surprised about that. Like, you go in the Discord and you're like, oh, why can't teammates trigger this? It would be so nice. You could, like, set up this pseudo Rube Goldberg machine trap where they move here. and do this. Like, it's needlessly complicated, right? Whereas now it's just, oh, yeah, friendlies can trigger it. Also good for SVR because... They just yeah. weren't usable before. You throw them down and they instantly got popped, so you kind of had to use them as just worse grenades. Whereas now, you can throw them on a flag and it has to be dealt with first, so it's time delay. I, I, I'm glad that fire man. Yeah, I, I also like that teammates are able to just run through it and not have to worry about it, so you can block off zone while your team goes to do things. In that case, it works like a skunk bomb. It's zone control. It is a nice change, but uh, going over to the ziplines, Weezy, would you like to tell us off uh, on 
what the zipline changes work? Yeah, so the zipline changes provide a 10% zoom uh, when you pull it out. And when you're deploying the zipline, you immediately go on the zipline. You don't have to wait until it's fully deployed. And, and honestly, I, it's such it was such a good change. Overall. I love using ziplines now. They're so fun. <laughs> I used it on stream last, I think last week for a little bit when I was chasing someone. I think, and I, okay, I'm going to make a bit of a bold claim here. I think that ziplines are eventually going to be one of the best throwables in the game. I feel like it's kind of just untapped treasure at the moment. Whereas it's waiting for someone to actually learn tech with it. And once that tech is learned, it's going to be oppressive. But until then, they're just fun. Yeah. But that, that's my bold doable. claim. Uh, but yes, the auto deployment, the I okay, the zoom out really underrated. Just having that passive, just pulling out a throwable that barely affects your movement speed, being able to see more view range, that's a very good addition. Like that's very strong. It's I even stronger worried. if you have it's even stronger if you have a bigger monitor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I okay, I was really worried to the point where I put like a feedback right away saying, I don't think it should be this large. Yeah, I especially think maybe if you have a bigger it by five percent. Yeah, no, it should not be that good. But it it's a very nice quality of life change. It makes zip lines actually usable now to the degree where a uh, good dodging tool, good mobility tool. I do think that it's untapped potential at the moment. And I think that one day we're going to have a situation where there's this, like, imagine this, right? There's like some scrims going on and there's this guy that's just burst moving around with zip lines, popping someone with a sniper. I can't wait to see that. Oh my God. Be the be the change you want to see in the world. I gotta I gotta learn zip lines now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I like I, I I I it does have like an aggressive factor as well. So you like you can use it if you're chasing someone, especially in like uh, areas that have uh, shallow water. The old zip line shotgun meme. You get on it, yep. you jump off it, pow. <laughs> yeah, zip lines are definitely looking in a lot better slot than they have been. Um, and one little extra tidbit is that the BCG in mystery mode, specifically what, fast and slow? Yep. yep. Has and slow finally months. been fixed. Finally. And if you haven't seen a slow or fast egg, do yourself, like, just do yourself a solid. Join someone's mystery mode lobby, say, can you put it on slow or fast? Go to the shooting range and fire one of those eggs. It will be the funniest thing you've seen all day. <laughs> just seeing an <laughs> egg slowly fly like ba ba da da da, just slowly floating through the air. Yeah, that's really goofy. Oh, it's so goofy. But yes, it finally works. It, it's really funny to see it fly slowly and horrifying to see it when it's slowly going toward you. It can be oppressive and fast bullets as well. Oh, okay, 100%. Everything's oppressive and fast bullets. Yeah, if you use it right, but even then... Uh, it's scan grenade launcher looking. <laughs> That's what you wanted, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Now, I know that wasn't a big talking point, but something that has been is the upcoming, maybe, release of Super <laughs> Animal... World. Now, you guys talked about there being some updates. I haven't even really seen or heard anything, so what do you guys have to say about this? I spit my drink, man. Don't do that. <laughs> Just a sudden, maybe. And I... All right. Uh, um, okay. I'm happy that we finally got footage of Super Animal Worlds. They release... What was it? Three sort of gameplay showcases being fishing... Uh, butterfly catching and hamster ball racing, which the hamster ball racing looked so good. Like they made this full track. There's like speed boost tiles. It it looks really cool. I cannot wait to try it. 
but oh, yeah, I'm also sure. just very excited for Super Animal World in general. Like it in the video that they showed it, it goes to show that they spent time working on it. And yeah. I was worried. Okay, I was really worried saying to myself, oh, it's gonna come out, it's gonna be a disaster, it's gonna suck. It's not it's not gonna be good, like the full doomer mentality. But no, after seeing it, I'm optimistic. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, but I am optimistic. Yeah, it's something that you can't really rush, and you need a lot of time for. It needs uh, tender love and care, or else it's just going to come out floundering on the floor, being a little goofy mess. Yeah, that's the same thing with, like, <laughs> ranked. Uh-oh. <laughs> and you brought up the cursed word. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, well, someone had to but... say it. You know, you're right. Um, <laughs> but yes, I, I'm i also curious to see how it's going to be implemented alongside the game. Like when you boot up Super Animal Royale, will you have to click a button that says, would you like to log into the Royale or the world? I yeah, wonder how be interesting. they're going to actually implement that in. Because I don't know. Did they say it was going to be like a free DLC? It's a, it like, it's a free expansion, I believe. Okay, so it's just going to be implemented into the game. Yeah. Okay, got it. I. Uh, what was it? Like, that reminds me of... um, God, what was that one? It wasn't Isaac, because Isaac doesn't... The Binding of Isaac doesn't get free expansions. It's just a DLC. So what was the... I can't remember it off the top of my head. I think it might have been... um. I think it might have been like Deep Rock Galactic Survivors that has something similar where they just add in entire chunks of how the game works for free. But mm -hmm. it, it's going to be similar in a vein then to how they just kind of major content overhaul. Uh, actually, specific. Okay, mentioning content overhauls. Where do you think the next location is going to be? Because that is a question that always gets thrown around and does not get discussed for long enough because I think that there actually is a good chunk of places on the map. They're just like, oh, it doesn't matter where this goes or, oh, there's nothing here. I think it's like top left is going to be the next location. And I think it's yeah. going to be like some kind of a, it's going to be some kind of like ski lodge maybe because there are like, yeah, the that's my guess. The, yeah. There's going to be like mountains with the, the bridge right in that area. And then you just put the ski resort like right under it. It makes too much sense. Yeah, like now, Tundra only... has Tundra has not gotten changed in in years. So the only downside can, is that uh, the corners of the map never get touched. Like uh, Pixel, no, sorry, not Pixel Port. Uh, the uh, Super Aquatic World or whatever it's called. Yeah, Sea Land. Sea Land never gets touched. I have I never visit it, and that goes to show, like, oh yeah, no, I it's only touched it. when like it's at the very beginning of the flight path, but that's yeah. essentially it. Or or when like AFK is dropped there, I have this one clip of a guy who handballed eight AFKs at Sealand, and their game almost crashed when they ran over eight people. Oh boy. I Either those the, people had some yeah. like insane visual effects, or in terms of death explosion, or their computers oh just not I, the I best. Think, I like, guess three of them had the spaghetti explosion, and it was just this bomb that went off. <laughs> <laughs> Kaboom! So hopefully, we'll get even more news on the Super Animal World update soon. Um, one last thing that I know that we wanted to go over, and that was the. Current pass, they a four free pass dropped uh, yes. with a bunch of community um, uploads. So, how do we feel about that coming out? Legendary, best that was pass. Amazing. All right, okay. Even if and when this thing rotates and it isn't free anymore, when people like ask me, "Oh, what pass should I buy?" That one right there. It has some of the most solid cosmetics in the game. The weapons are just fire. Like, okay, I might be a bit biased as well because I love the Plague Doctor outfit, but 
I do also think that the blush emote is catered and fit right into a community like this. Like, yeah, the shy emote. No, is, no pointing yeah. fingers, but you know, um, yeah, it's still, catered to like, those people. <laughs> and a cool thing that actually happened this past uh, Neon Assassin designed four ties that got into the game. Two of them were in yep. the pass. One of them was in the saw shop, and one of them was in the Carl's cart. So now I think they are the first person to say that they have a cosmetic added to every facet of the game besides seasonal events. Yeah. Which is, I that's a massive that. flex. Like, oh my god, I'm so like, proud It's not of a personalized too. cosmetic, but it's like a community-suggested cosmetic. Oh, so of course, but it's still a massive flex. Like... Yeah, for sure. They designed it, and then they're just like, "Wow, this looks good," and then they put it in there. So yeah. I, I think it's a good show. The fact that it was free was definitely a nice touch. I did state that in order for them to probably do good with sales and motivation for people coming in, making the pass free would be a good idea. Uh, in feedback, and. It only takes like a few seconds to redeem it, though. Yeah, but um, still. I actually did say this. I said I feel like a free pass is the last thing that they could have done, to be honest, with all of the extensions and you know, slow updates and everything. I feel like that was the least that could be done is a free pass. There does ever, does anyone disagree with me when I say that? Not like, really. I feel I, like I that was borderline saying. needed for the amount of just just the slow year that had happened, you know, and the kind of the fall through of the timeline and the promises and all this stuff. So I was like, okay, thank goodness. Cause if they tried to take the community suggestions and then put a price tag on that after everything that's happened, that would have been crazy. That is a good point. Yeah. Like you'd effectively be marketing, um, community design suggestions, which, uh, Oh, uh, that's not stealing, uh, unless right? unless it gets <laughs> like unless it's like um what they do in what was it uh yeah brawl stars where there is the community creator design skin programs where it's like the first 50k goes to the person who designed it and then they get like a chunk of every portion that goes into it unless it's something like that where a chunk of the past goes to designers then I don't think that they could like put a price on community create cosmetics unless it's like directly credited toward them. But besides that, making it free was probably the best out. Yeah, one other note, I heard a lot of people actually agree with you, Pakran, that this is one of the better passes of all time. Um, how do we feel about the fact that one of the better passes of all time was strictly community suggestions and not actually creations from the team. Do we feel like this should lead to maybe more half and half passes where we would want to see half community creations and then half whatever they can cook up? Or, or do you think this is I'd a good yeah. one and done for the community creation passes? I'd I think yes. it's, yeah, definitely. a. It, it's probably a good move going forward to work with the community on um like cosmetics like they especially care. yeah of course if it, as long as they have some way and if they are going to put a price point on it as long as there's like some form of credit or agreed upon terms like they are fully willing to just like hand it over to them or they're willing yes. to just um say okay we'll give you a portion of the profit to like toward your design or something then I feel like that's good, but in either case, I feel like the community creates some banger ideas. The rock, paper, scissors emote that I saw in the cosmetic design forum, that looked so good. There's also so much like emotes that are designed around, oh yeah, find another person to do it with. And I think that would be a cool thing going forward in the future, where... You go up to someone and they have this little like emote icon out and you do it next to them and you do like this duo emote. Yeah. It might be a cool thing cool. to have in the future for the past, but it's going been back suggested to it, for quite a while, so Yeah. I'm sure go, they can figure it out. Going back to it though, with the pass, I do think that community created suggestions are probably the way to go, as long as there is proper credit given. 
and it is not entirely community created because I feel like, like Broad said, putting a price tag on something that is entirely made by the community and then not compensating them for something like that is a bit scummy. Yeah, for sure. Alrighty. Well, honestly, I feel like we've come to a pretty natural conclusion unless you guys had anything pop up during the course of this conversation that you would want to talk about, just some recent events. But we are through our entire list. And I feel like this is a pretty good introduction. Hopefully we get, can get back into a normal flow of these episodes as long as uh, things start uh, making moves again. Yeah, there are so. be other things to talk about in the future. Just wanted to put something out there. Even if it's a bit on the shorter side, we just wanted to put something out there to you know, hold you all over and say, hey, we're still here. Broads is still alive. Uh, barely. Fortunately. Barely. Yeah, barely. <laughs> and uh, I'll probably become even more scarce in December. Obviously, I have oh, God, yeah. the, the weekend of my wedding. Yeah, I will be time. completely gone. I'm gone on a honeymoon for 10 days. We're going to Ireland. Uh, looking uh, looking forward to that. And then we come back, and there's four days until Christmas Eve. So then we'll have we're the normal... in Ireland. Say again? We're specifically in Ireland. Uh, we're staying in Dublin for the first four days, and then the next six days we're staying in Galway, which is west right uh, across from ooh, dublin fancy so okay yeah that's a good location yeah, I'll, I'll give you that it'll be fun um obviously six foot ten plane rides not looking forward to that we're gonna see if i can <laughs> get my legs in in this plane period um, you, you're gonna be very fortunate if you get a um uh, emergency exit seat yeah i know we actually <laughs> bought the upgraded tickets so that we could pick our seats so that we could go oh, with, Jesus. Uh, close to the um emergency exit seats where it says there's extra space so anyways i'll be around ish and you guys are always around ish wheezy congrats on the new yeah. job hope you have fun thank uh, you popcorn big ups on the uh continuing to grind that mental health i know that's uh that can be a scary oh. game sometimes an imaginary dragon yeah but um <laughs> Hey, you trust. <laughs> Yay, uh, the interruption happened. Yeah. I uh, appreciate <laughs> everyone for... These. Yeah, exactly. Appreciate you guys for listening. And uh, this was Sarcast Episode 8, and we'll, we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>